but potato everybody else no no word from anybody personal pings is what it's at but we're underway anyway i think the high command uh the holy crusaders guys and holy crusaders managed to get themselves around there so here we go underway how do we defend this we know a and b really rough you don't get on there there's trebs available and trebs at both points so you don't really want to defend up there it's all about finding out that defending the c point and the home point it's a tough match this one this is going to be tough here we see monastics we see jav cav we see liao's in there on the uh, the attacking side on the defensive side there's wing to sars fantastic cavalry i love them jav cav as well there's plenty of berserkers still they're still so good uh fort abrasio you've got uh, IPGs in there, you've got Cylidars, Iron Reapers, and then on the attack as well, you've got some Sun Defenders, like Alien Militia, some pa uh, some Javelins as well, a couple of sets of Imp Javs, and then you've got Poleaxes, Short Swords, a Maul, and a couple of uh, Muskets, and then loads of Poleaxes, Mauls, and then a couple of Muskets at the very bottom there, on the side of the Defenders here as well. All of them look like they're full, like full stacking the one side there, they're full stacking, the B-side Siege Tower. Let's see what happens with that there. Let's see what happens. Holy Crusaders on the defense versus Love and Devotion. Your guys' predictions are Holy Crusaders to win this one. No more B tier merch, lol. <laughs> okay, so we'll zoom out of here, we'll get up into the sky like we would always, and we know that they're stacking B, so we're going to go over to B here. Full, full on pushing, going straight towards the gate here from the B side. There is overlook down there on the A side. Lots of the defense don't know what to do with this here. They've already started stacking. They're trebbing the gate. Interesting strategy. A quick way to get the gate down and they're going to try and go straight in from the gate. The EU1 boys. There's going to be a rotation from the NA stack. It's quite a long rotation to come to be here. But that's probably one of the reasons why the EU side of Love and Devotion decided to do this. You've got bubbles out there with a unit of uh, a unit of muskets that are clearly getting uh, hit by the artillery there. Another tribe to go on the wall and onto this uh, the doorway here, but not really dealing much damage to it really in the grand scheme of things. It's taken a bit of time to actually take the wall gate down, but they are eventually gate down. Units are set up and they bring in a full push into the gateway of B. We'll have an overlook, uh, an overview as well, just to see what's going on. Overlook is still there, destroying stuff. Well, the siege tower is making its way around this area. You're gonna have to watch. There's gonna be cavalry rotating all the way around from the NA boys, because they know how to use their cavalry for sure. They're gonna go all the way around to the right hand side of the point. Ruga Kona is already capping B. There isn't gonna really be much use of uh, the point up there or defending the point up there because it's all trebable. And the guys from EU start to make their way around. The first kill goes down, drop dead, goes to M. Ger Knight Karin, by the way. Um whatever you want to class that is. They've got a good fight going on on the B point here, but the Wolfie boys are going to be sent in to try and fight that while Iron Reapers on the defensive side start to charge through the point here. Who's going to w win out on top here? Gawking Asura and the rest of the enemy boys. Well, there's a Cav charge coming in the back. The muskets of public enemy have to be moved or they're going to get steamrolled. People comes round with his cavalry, charges all the way through that while B is getting capped, but the units are all dismantled here from the EU side, but B is going to be taken from the EU side, and unit-wise, that's a big change of units here. As you can see, they've used three trebs already. We are down to 12 heroes on the attack, but 11 for the defenders. So the defenders lost out more heroes in that fight, but the, the rest of the EU boys can start making their way down. They have some units down here, nothing too major, but enough to kind of fight their way forward towards C point, which is where they look like they're going to go. Broker Vortex and all that fighting downstairs against people, God King Azura, and the rest of the NA boys will start to get our, uh, like all their units back to full health. A new set of units coming from the supply point. And then you've got Adarum, 
I drove ban, capping A to give you that extra bit of time, and now it's all about setting up here in the gateway here for the EU boys. We've got out cavalry as well, so they're starting to rotate around. It's all about who wins these battles one on one v calves, because that's going to win you or lose you this battle at this point. There we go, the calf fight goes in. Fat Boy's getting picked on here. He's a mall player, but will you get on his horse and get out of that one? You've also got a couple of fights going on elsewhere. Over to the left-hand side, you see Grandpa here in bubbles. All of the golden comes in. All the Polaxes start to come in, and they start to use their abilities here. Couple of fights in different areas of the map. Looks like they're going in favour of the NA boys in terms of this left-hand side push. All the heroes are getting pushed back. The units are getting pushed back. It's quite a close battle, but overall... The NA boys are winning these with the cav rotations and the units getting all over the place on the Holy Crusader side. They are going to cap A for the most part, but somebody has stopped them on the point. Adro still not capped the point. Well, the units have to wait to see what goes on. NA boys push the boys out of Holy Crusaders. A is getting capped and we're down to 10. Eight, make that eight heroes alive for the Holy Crusaders. Uh, for Love and Devotion, sorry. Holy Crusaders down to 13, but they're going to cap the supply point. The boys are going to get the siege towers up on the wall and then they're ready to start making a reset up here. Any boys running around with their cavalry doing a fantastic effort at this point in time. It's looking good in their favour. We don't want to look at runes. We want to look at casualties. So the any boys have killed 795 units versus the 245 units. Or they, they've got that many left, sorry. 393 units that have died on the side of the EU guys and 217 on the defense so the defense are definitely winning this one as things stand hero wise you can see as well they're still having a muster back in we have 10 more tribes left and eu boys of love and devotion are getting set up at the main a point gateway that's the closest from their spawn area you've got blackwind and elgrim over the other side but the any boys are going to keep that supply point and make sure that they can rotate out of there because it's the closest supply point to the enemy side and they don't want to be losing that one. So they'll hold that firm. They'll have cav rotation guys on the NA side roaming around the battlefield, having a look for opportunities where a cav charge can come in handy. You see Oliver the Golden pushing his units up there along with Otherworld all waiting up. Superbone coming up as well. And the EU boys are starting to cluster at the A gate here, now ready to look for an opportunity to start moving forward so that they can gain a lasting advantage here. All of the defenders, for the most part, are on the supply point. People, Yuka Shomoto and Fat Boy rotation along with Garf around here. But you see Kiss My Boom going for the long rotation with his calf. The Love and Devotion boys are starting to go and find a way towards C, which is going to have to make the any boys rotate. Broken Vortex getting picked up here and stopped here by a second for Yuka Shomoto, but doesn't really do anything major. The any boys start to move off of the units. And Adusur is looking for a flank. Oliver the Golden has gone up the stairs to kill the units up top. Blackwind is up there. They're going to fight on that point up here. And it looks like they're going to get outnumbered here by the e, uh, NA boys on the wall here. With some good units as well to be taken out here. Unit-wise, 614 for the attackers and only and 790 for the defenders. The EU Love and Devotion boys are starting to make headway. They have Fort Abrasco watching the gap and they've got Javkav and then their units seem to be getting marched here at this point. A Treb comes in, hits the back of the NA boys. But here comes the Berserker spam and some range. There's the Flamers doing some work. Flamers will stun your units and stop you from really doing very much and heroes, which makes it really difficult. And here comes the Hussar charge in the back here. Kiss my boom. Gets the rotation with the calf charge and that's in the back there. That was looking pretty nasty there. How did that work out for them? Couple of heroes dead. It's 11 versus 12. 10. We got 10 heroes on the attacker side versus 12 of the defending side of Holy Crusaders. But they're doing a fantastic job of it. The Holy Crusaders are starting to sweep the boys of EU off of the floor here. Gorf picking up Adorbao as well. Can he take him out of the battle here? Rocky Falls from Yukishimoto. Uh, C is still being capped a little bit, but not majorly, and the supply point still holds on the Holy Crusaders side. Good rotations from the Holy Crusaders, and you can almost see that this game is almost done. We're almost double the units here for the NA boys. The hero-wise count has been massive. Definitely winning their one-on-one -on -one fights. Make that four-on-one -on fights, because they are picking off the heroes with amountable heroes on the defensive side. You've got Seagull, by the way, EU2 guy. Uh, rotating round with his cavalry outside the gate, 
still, but needing to wait till they all cluster back up for their next push. Akuma's on top of the wall. Kiss My Boom is still here as a short sword, trying to fight Otherworld, and the dual blade comes in to help. Grandpa, will he be able to pick up the short sword? No, he won't. The short sword of Otherworld manages to escape with his life, and the boys of love and devotion start to make their way in with their units and cavalry. They've got five and a half, well, almost six minutes here to cap this, but any boys are not wanting you day guys to even get into that gateway. So they start to rotate towards the gateway with the majority of their units. Not every single one of their units are going that way. There's guys watching and rotating, but Yukimo Shimoto is picked up by Broken Vortex. Heroes are all clustered in the gateway. They have to find a way around this now because there is plenty of units and this is their last push if you say from the very get-go, I think. Love and Devotion, I've got one push in them. The unit-wise and the unit amount, the number-wise, they've got one unit. Iron Reapers comes charging in. God King Azura kills Rocky. That must have been from that cat, that charge. And then there's a couple of heroes drop. Drip, di drip drop and Adismer falls down here as well. We're already a couple of heroes down. But the NA boys are dying too. They're getting wiped off of the map here as well. HK, Public Enemy and Blackwing dying. It is 12 versus 12. It's a close fight in the front gateway. Here comes the Armager charge. Oh, that was the monastic charge. I'll take that right back. It was a monastic charge. It's 11 versus 11. It's a hero fight now. Unit-wise, it don't look like units are coming for any team here. The units count really low on the side of the attackers, and they don't really have anything to counter it. The NA boys can go back to that supply point and re-set up, ready to go back at this fight here. Nothing else is going on on the map elsewhere. You can see Kiss My Boom trying to look for a way around there, but Superbone, Jet Li, all over the gold, and all clumping up together, getting the units together, and trying to take out as many of these heroes as possible. It's a 10v10 in this situation, but the defending side definitely have the number advantage with that heroes they have uh, the units and heroes here as well they're winning the hero bit fights they're also winning on the unit count here as you can see 521 versus 151 there's it's, it's a massive win in the side of the na side here i don't see love and devotion turning this one around i think you boys have put the predictions in for holy crusaders have come off and got this one 100 correct kiss my boom looking for that treb sees the pike it's just a garbage set, a village watch with Pike here. And in the gateway, the EU boys are nothing left unit-wise. Any boys will start to push yourself out. There's still six trebs available. And it all depends on who needs to use them trebs. They're on the artillery. Blackwind's sitting really far back there. But not able to do very much here. All of the golden falls is death from Seagull. But we are 14 defenders left versus only nine and they're all starting to leave the battle the eu boys know their battle is done they have lost this one they all leave the battle in a flood because any have defended very very good very strong defense here from the any boys we're going to see what it means by the end on the last screen here wolfie slayer just having a look with the village village watchman chilling out here Akuo, Fort Brasho, chilling in one berserker. All the boys of any have managed to shut the gate as well, and they can't do anything. It's literally a win win. It's a win win. All we need is Kizu to leave the battle, and they all watch valiantly on top. There we go. Kizu is the last guy to die. Will they end the battle here? Will Kizu do it? There we go. Kizu left the battle, and that is it. The Red Wind, Black Wind getting the MVP. He's technically an NA player. He played for the EU side and he picks up the MVP for the EU boys. On the defending side, People is the NA uh, MVP. Two hero kills, three deaths. What, 10 says 145 unit kills. Unit wise, doing a good job. Broken Vortex picking up three heroes. Papa and Emerger picking up three hero kills. Our most hero kills on the defensive side goes to Fat Boy. Oh no, it doesn't. I was going to say goes to Fat Boy, but it goes to Yushikimoto with eight. Fat Boy with five. You've also got Oliver the Golden turning up here with 123 unit kills, four hero kills. Post match analysis though, it shows it is dominant in the side of the NA side. A lot more heroes killed from NA. It's 40 versus 19, so double, more than double. Uh, and then in terms of the units, almost double as well with that one. So NA dominated Sun City. They understood what to do in the defensive side of things. It's a rough match. A and B is very trebable. But what guys do you think of that one? The giveaway and the prediction here, we'll give that away. We know that you guys, we know, we know who wins this one. We know who wins this one. 
Holy Crusaders, 79% of you voted for Holy Crusaders. 79%. Seven. That was that was it. That's all you needed. Seventy nine percent of you guys voted for Holy Crusaders. Very well done. Very good votes, guys. The predictions were correct. You guys got this one in the bag. Our next matchup will be a switch over the rotation here. We're going to see reverse fixtures. It's going to be love and devotion with the defense versus the any boys of Holy Crusaders. Trying to go on on their attack. Holy Crusaders. Will any win this one outright? Will Love and Devotion manage to defend with their unit?